Can you guys hear me? Okay. Uh, actually, it's my first time to speak in uh, that fast. It's my canal? Okay. How about now? Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Um, welcome to Google Developer Space. Uh, my name is Dan Boren. Uh, I'm the custom engineer from Google Cloud team. Uh, for the people first time heard about my name, you probably feel like very interesting name. Uh, I normally make some joke about my name at the beginning, especially Saturday afternoon. Uh, you probably heard about my brother, you know, the muscle man, <laughs> the rumble, <laughs> and the people stay in Singapore. You definitely heard about my sister's business in the East Coast. Anyone get it? Yeah, Jumbo Seafood. <laughs> okay, uh, so I work in Google almost for three years, uh, but I feel like seven, eight years already. Uh, so I passed some of the certification around cloud architect, data engineer, uh, developer, and also the G Suite. I hope that one enough make me qualified to speak here. So today I'm going to talk about Ansos. Um, how many of you guys heard about it before? Okay, almost one third, okay. So uh, that's great. Um, I have two t-shirts here. By the end of my session, probably ask you a few questions. Who the people first read their hand? Uh, and got it right, you got the t-shirt. But uh, sorry to say, my human intelligence cannot predict what size you know, the people answer it. But you can take it or you can share with your friend, okay? <laughs> Okay, let's do it. Uh, I think working in the cloud world, technology world is really challenging now. Because we had to understand infrastructure, you know, storage, compute, data analytics, machine learning, devices, oh my god, a lot of things. But still not enough. You still now have to think about learn some Greek language, right? And read some Greek mythologies. Uh, the terminology, I think most people know it, right? Kubernetes, Stu, Titan, Ansos. Uh, the book I put here, actually the, on the left one, is one of the uh, favorite book of my son, who is a teenager already. So I always have some trouble to deal with him now. So now I feel like more and more common language with him. So I talk about some Greek terminology, and he also understands. Uh, but for the people familiar with Google Cloud, you know, uh, they have different meanings, right? Kubernetes is orchestration for container, and Istio is for service mesh. Uh, Titan is our chip, you know, security chip, uh, and also the uh, UB keys, uh, sorry, security keys, which I'm carrying now, two-factor authentication. And then we'll talk about Ansos today. And it will be the operating platform for hybrid and multi-cloud. And don't ask me why we name product with this one. Okay, I have no idea. Uh, in, within Google, we have something called stop using a uh, great God to name our product. And we hope there are no more great God from Google Cloud Platform anymore, okay? Uh, since we talk about uh, Greek mythology, I will use the terminology of the book, okay? So like, I will use prelog, talk about some of the fundamental before I talk about uh, answers. I believe everyone know familiar with container? Yes? Kubernetes? Okay, is still? Wow, okay. So probably I can quickly to go through the first one. Then we talk about the main story about Ansel's introduction, the technical building blocks, and what each of the component and what they do. And also, uh, we will be focused on the GK Young Prime, which is a key component for Ansel's. Right. Uh, last but not least, I will share with you guys some of the technical requirements uh, when you plan to start the journey and also think about some of the resources or documentations, okay? Great, uh, let's talk about Google's uh, innovation around container technology. I would like to use this one started. I think for the people staying in Singapore, we are, we are no stranger for container, right? Uh, this is famous for trading, you know, lots of, very close to here, right? Tanjo Baga Pod. You will see a lot of, lot of container over there, right? Uh, if you, anyone know the interlace, the candle around here? 
Yeah, this is the best design in 2018. I don't understand why, okay? But this is all container, right? Uh, but we talk about different containers. Um, and Google also no stranger for container, right? So uh, think about the service we provided by Google, right? We had to manage at scale. So every week, actually this number not accurate anymore, now it's six billion. Every week we had to launch you know, the container in our platform. Yeah. And it turned out to be, you know, everyone knows it's open source project. Google it's came from Google internal project called Borg. And we make it open source. Now all the community, even our friend, they can benefit from this technology. And how many of you think the container technology came from Docker? Could you read that? Anyone think about Docker started the container technology? Yeah, okay, I see someone say no, okay. That's great. Uh, that, that's actually, Google is starting internally first. So you think about the scale of Google, how to manage the services. So we, very early stage, we start to think about how we can isolate different resources and how we can control different process, what kind of resources they can access. So that's the reason we come out with something called C group, control group, which can define what kind of resources the process can access, so resource isolation. Then we have something called RMC TFY. Anyone want to try this one? I will give you a t-shirt. Anyone want to try? What's meaning? RMC TFY. Okay? Yes, please. What's the answer? Super. Okay, later you can collect uh, one shirt from here. That's meaning, let me container that for you. <laughs> so simple, right? <laughs> Disappointed? <laughs> okay. So that's a Google internal term. Okay, so basically this is the Google version of a container. Then 2014, Docker release, and then Google adopted. The reason why Google not using our standard using versus using container, because we don't want to be disrupted in the industries. Better using something already people accepted. Right? Then the rest of the history is everyone knew already, right? So we make it open source, everyone can benefit from it. Okay, then after that we'll talk about Google Kubernetes engine and Google Service Match, which is managed version of EC2. I will make it very quick on this area. I believe most people knew already. So in a nutshell, Google Kubernetes uh, engine is a managed version of Kubernetes. And Kubernetes, as I said earlier, is origin from Google, uh, we call Borg, okay? So basically, you have master to help you to manage your API, traffic, and configuration, also provide a mechanism for you to orchestrate all your process. And then you have one or more nodes running your kubelet. It's a proxy. Uh, it's a turnkey, it's an open source project. Uh, as I said earlier, anyone, you can run it in your data center, in Google Cloud, in our friend's cloud, no problem. Anyone can benefit from it. Then you say, hey, since it's open source, why I need a managed service from Google? I'm not sure how many of you once managed community in your data center. Could you, could you raise your hand? No, one, okay. So you knew the pain, right? The challenge, how you can maintain, operate the community. It's not an easy task. Yeah. So this is turnkey solution, which meaning Google has become your operation team. For the people you're familiar with Google, uh, SRE, Site Reliability Engineering Technology, basically Google have a bunch of the team to help you to manage community service. And you only focus on deploy application, manage traffic, control the securities. Yeah. So focus on most important thing for you and for your organization. Uh, another benefit is you can integrate with Google other cloud native service like CI, CD, security controls, right? Monitoring, logging, telemetry, all these kind of service you will got out of the box from the platform. This is very high level architect uh, looks like uh, when you're running GKE on Google Cloud Platform. So the master, which is the managed service, it's transparent for you. You don't need to worry about it, it's Google Manage. 
And most important thing, we don't charge you, okay? When I say don't charge you, it's meaning our friend, they will charge you. Uh, then the knot. The knot is one or more uh, the server we're running. Uh, then we provide option in auto everything. Later we'll explain what's meaning auto everything. So basically, uh, if you're familiar with the Google Cloud, you can use in gcloud command uh, SDK to provision the cluster. Then you can use in kubectl to deploy or catch all your applications. Yeah. When I say auto everything, it's meaning we provide a fully managed service for auto repel, upgrade, auto scale. Later I explain what kind of auto scale we provided. We also have the beta version called auto provision. Uh, actually, when we say auto scale, we have different levels. Uh, no level, pole level, vertical, horizontal, then application levels. So you have different uh, levels of the auto scale. Some of the highlight features like a private cluster for the enterprise customer, uh, because by default your cluster is have public IP, which make enterprise customer feel scary, right? So you have the uh, option now, you can disable the public IP, uh, then make your workload within your uh, private network. Another one is Google innovation around the community core. Uh, you can call it a container native load balancer or call it a network endpoint group, which meaning, you know, traditional load balancer, whenever traffic come in, it will be the traffic was sent through the VM level using IP table to route to the pole levels. Uh, when we're using the container native load balancer, we'll get rid of the IP table. and Your traffic will right away from the load balancer re directly reach out to the containers. So you reduce one hop of your traffic. So this is really a great technology and now it's GA already. Okay, then we talk about the cloud service match, which is the managed version of Istio. So Istio, I believe everyone heard about it, or some of you. Uh, it's service mesh, it's open service platform for you to manage all your service traffic, and manage security and policy configurations. And not only support container-based application, but also VM-based. Yeah. So Istio is a great combination with Kubernetes. So this is a typical architect, a uh, high-level uh, diagram, you know, decouple different components in Istio. Istio origin from uh, Lyft. And Google and Red Hat is the main contributor for this open source project. Uh, so different people use different terminology. So it's basically it's decouple your service and uh, your service control. So it's called sidecar. Uh, someone called proxy and someone called envoy. Okay. So for the people be developer, you probably understand the pain. Say, hey, when I code my program, I don't want to care about security, service control, configuration. It's not my job. My job is coding. And I hope I can also enjoy writing documentation. Uh, so, uh, but this way you can decouple your service and your uh, service controls. Uh, and also have three major components, pilot, mixer, and citadel. It take care about pilot, take care about traffic control, mixer, take care about telemetry, logging, monitoring, then last not least, Citadel, take care about your security, uh, your authentication and authorizations. Yeah. Then again, if you manage Istio yourself, that take a lot of effort and a lot of operation overhead. So that's the reason Google provide our managed service core cloud service match. Uh, so we provide managed component for Pilot, we call traffic director. So it's a global load balancer to direct traffic to VM base, to container base, and has a check and auto, uh, auto scale based on the traffic. Then we provide a managed CA, a Google identity, a certificate management, and IAP. And last but not least, for the mixture, uh, we didn't replace it. We just provide a managed service for your telemetry and logging monitorings. Uh, for the people familiar with the Google Cloud, actually it's called Stackdriver. So allow you guys to logging, monitoring, um, tracing, even debugging. Uh, talk about debugging, it's amazing capability, I, li I like uh, Stackdriver. Uh, 
you can debug your code in cloud, in production environment. That's really amazing capability. When I be a programmer, which is 12 years ago, uh, but that's capability really amazing for developers. Okay, so give you a screenshot of how service mesh looks like. Uh, you can monitor all the traffic. Uh, most important thing, we put Google's SRE. For the people familiar with Google SRE, you know, we allow you to define some error budget, service level uh, objective, so you can define this kind of SRO for your service. Okay, I think enough for build out the foundation about, hey, talk about community issue before we talk about answers. So answer, I will talk about two parts, give you an introduction, what the different building, technical building blocks, and what they do, and what's the value for the customer. And then we zoom into GKE on Prime, which is the key component for the hybrid cloud. Ansos, uh, this is, we call it, say, hey, operating system for hybrid and multi-cloud environment. And Google is the first. Usually we also say Google is the first and only one provider for the platform for hybrid cloud and multi-cloud. And the change, is, it changed actually three days ago. And our friend also come out something similar. Anyone heard about it? So called Azure Arc. So it's using the same standard uh, based on open source technology. So it's amazing open source, so someone also follows. Uh, you think about it, just think about answers like Linux for cloud platforms. So across different platform, different environment, all based on the open source technology. Uh, so, Ansos allow you to manage your workload application on your data center, on Google Cloud Platform, even on our friend platforms, as long as it's based on the same standard. Uh, we provide you a kind of control plane to provide a uniform monitor UI for you to look at all your uh, application running. You can deploy application on different environment. And also we provide a marketplace for the people using open source stack. It's very painful, you know, you have to be signed different contract. When you have problem, you have to talk to different vendors. But Google try to uniform your open source stack, whether it's on-prem or in cloud. Last but not least, you still can continue to leverage Google's native cloud-based services, as I mentioned earlier. I will talk about more in the later slide. So this is, I call it, the technical building block of unsourced platform. So of course, based on the open source technology, community is still. Uh, you can leverage all the Google service, telemetry, logging, monitoring, configuration management, uh, marketplace, and also Google other service. Then we also provide you a kind of service. So for the people heard about the Knative, we, we provide a manager version called Cloud Run, okay? Cloud Run, it's a, a Google managed version for Knative. Then we provide you CI CD uh, using Cloud Build, um, other component like uh, container registry, uh, source repository. And last but not least, also you can do AI machine learning uh, on the Kubernetes and EC2 platform. So we call it uh, Kubiflow. So that's allow you to train your machine learning model, whether it's on-prem or in cloud. So this is a high level of different technical building block of answers. Then we go to a little bit down to the technical detail level. By the way, some people may feel disappointed when we talk about answers because they always think, hey, where is the, the product answers, where it is? But sometimes I feel like, oh, I'm going to disappoint you because there's no product called answers. It's just like pro software platform stack. So different open source uh, technology and different components and put un under one umbrella. So having said that, you can see uh, different technical building blocks within the Ansos stack. So of course, the critical thing will be Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes in cloud, Kubernetes on prime. So you can expect it consistent experiences, whether it's on-prem or in cloud, whether Google Cloud or other cloud. 
About level will be the container. You know, we talk about it. Uh, the container we are still using the Docker, but now we can allow people using different con container runtime now called OCI, which is a more open uh, container standard. Then we have the monitoring and uh, stack driver for your logic monitoring, and we have configuration policy management, service match, and a GKE Connect. We'll talk about more later. And don't forget, we also provide you the CI/CD toolings, you know, Cloud Build, which is managed version equivalent like uh, Jenkins, right? Uh, and also we have private host Git to manage your source code and your container image. And we have the marketplace for you to deploy your open software stack. So you can deploy OSS stack, whether it's on prime or in cloud. Let's go through one by one each of the component and how the, the function it is. The first one is JKE on prime. So basically, we bring Google Managed Kubernetes service to customer data center. Allow you to deploy application no matter where they are. So even you can bring your hardware. So by the way, Ansos is 100% software stack. You can reuse your existing hardware. Protect your investment. And also, we provide a kind of uh, managed service for your community in your data center and will provide a kind of auto-scale uh, capabilities for your on-prime workload. Uh, we also provide you auto-upgrade software, which is validated and uh, patched by Google. So you can expect that Google provide a kind of managed service for your GKE in your data center. And the second one is the configuration management. For the people, if you have experiences manage multiple cluster configuration, security control, policy control, you can imagine how painful manage multiple cluster control and multiple environment. But Ansos provide a single place, which is called configuration management, allow you to define all your configuration in one single source in YAML file, later I'll talk about more, and it automatically sync to your cloud environment to on-prime environments which keep a single source of truth in the Git uh, repositories. And third one, as I mentioned earlier, Google provide a managed service for Istio. So allow you to build up a microservice based architect and to allow you to control your traffic, authentication, or authorization in single platform. And you can monitor all the traffic among your different microservices whether it's container-based or it's VM-based uh, workload. And one more, um, one more uh, new feature I didn't put in slide is called uh, workload identity. Uh, for the people, should you have external application call any services host on container, you know something called service account, right? You had to download this uh, key, they had to wrote it, archive this one, so painful, right? I have so many customers, they forgot, you know, to get rid of this key when they commit the code to GitHub, then someone can use your service account to provision VM, even do the you know, Bitcoin mining under your account, that will be a disaster. Uh, with workload identity, you don't need to worry about download any key anymore. Okay? It's federated authentication. Even your workload running on our friend cloud like AWS, you can use an AWS EC2 instance ID to authenticate the authenticate the workload access the services in Google Cloud. So this is something called workload, uh, uh, workload identity ID. Yes, any question? For the customers on-prem who gone with the Cisco ACI solution or yeah. NSX with VMware, how does service mesh integrate from that point of view? You mean the service uh, mesh between your on-prem environment to cloud? Okay, so currently will be still will be separated deployment. So your service, so basically, later I'll talk about the GKE Connect, it's more like a central UI to control all your uh, configuration, your policy, your workload deployment. But the service 
the service on prem and on cloud, how they interact with each other. It depends on your first, your network uh, design. You know, you have to build up connectivity between your on-prem environment to cloud environment. Uh, and also, they can communicate each other, but through the load balancer, you know, the traffic director I mentioned earlier. Yeah, that's one will allow you to divert the traffic between different environments. Yeah. Uh, I hope I answer your question, or later offline we can talk about it. Yeah. So this is GKE Hub and Connect allow you to register the cluster through the different environments. So should you using GKE on Prime, whenever you create a cluster, uh, your cluster automatically registers through this uh, GKE Connect. So that's allow you single place to manage all the clusters through the different environments. So again, this is two heroes behind the scene for Unsource platform. So GKE we talked about earlier, and GKE on Prime is, we call it turnkey, turnkey solution to put managed Kubernetes into customer data centers. Uh, so Google provides a kind of managed service for you, and also you can integrate with Google's um, CI/CD tooling and also other telemetry like telemetry capability like stack drivers. So I will talk about a little bit detail about GKE on Prime. For the people familiar with uh, Kubernetes, you know uh, Kubicado. You will continue using it. Uh, we have new command called GKE Kato. So that one will be help you to create a domain control plane in your data center and also your user uh, control plane. Uh, then after that, you can use Kubicado to deploy application through the uh, Google's uh, G Cloud command line. Uh, one more thing I want to mention about it, so far we support the F5 for uh, local traffic management. Uh, you can expect it more load balancer we support it, uh, but currently only support F5. Uh, for the ver we support the VMware uh, vSphere 6.5. Uh, in the roadmap, we'll talk about more like KVM will support it in the coming, coming years. Okay, so by this uh, way, you can see uh, from the cloud environment, you can gain the single visibility about your on-prem and cloud environment, and also you can provision the cluster, you can provision the application in, onto your um, on-prem environments. When we talk about, hey, uh, one platform manage your on-prem environment and also cloud, you will be have a concern say, hey, should I have public IP to allow you connect it to the cloud? Uh, actually, you don't need to necessarily to have public IP to connect it to, to the Google Cloud Platform. Uh, so basically, it's using uh, through the NAT gateway and also firewall. So we build up secure tunnel between your environment to Google Cloud. And also, the physical layer part, you have different options you can build up a kind of dedicated interconnect between your data center to Google Cloud data center, or you can use the partner interconnect or using VPN. <coughs> this is how it looks like for GKE Connect. So basically how we can get visibility about the application running in your, in your environment. It's all through the GKE Connect. So basically it's a proxy running in every uh, service running in your environment. So that better way we can collect all the telemetry data, mental data, and also can send out the command and can deploy applications. Since we talk about telemetry, uh, we, you can also have the option to install the stack driver agent in your data center. So by this way, you can centralize, manage all your telemetry information. Again, we talk about uh, configuration management or policy management. So this is uh, an example to show you using Git as a single source to manage all your policy and configurations. You can define your policy configuration in the organization level or cluster level or workload levels or user levels. And everything you define just a YAML file. And every time you change, automatically will be synced up to multiple environments. So that will simplify your operation overhead. 
when you talk about policy control and configuration management. Okay, with that, uh, we have still have two minutes. I'm on time. So we'll talk about uh, uh, technical requirement. Actually, I cover more or less already. Then talk about some of the resources. Should do you want to be uh, get further understanding about Unsource platform? So first, it's uh, so far we support vSphere 6.5. Uh, it's under roadmap. We are going to support more other virtualization platform. Uh, for the load balancer, as I mentioned earlier, now support F5. You can expect that we're going to support more like Cisco, uh, Palo Alto. This is some of the resources or documentation. It's uh, always uh, right back to cloud.google.com. You can find out more information and technical overview and unsourced components. Uh, for the people, should you want to try Ansos, it will be a little bit um, not something like simple, like you know, GKE, you want to enable it on cloud quickly, you can try it. You have to talk to Google's um, representative team, and they will reach out to you to qualify your user case, your environment. Should you match uh, this kind of user case, then we can think about giving you three months trial license. Uh, so far, it's more for enterprise customer. Uh, especially for highly regulated customer like financial service or government, you know, or the customer they have their own community environment, they want to be build up a kind of orchestration across multiple environments. Uh, with that, uh, I'm going to end my session. I think that gentleman got one shirt already. Probably I have one question for you guys because I only have two shirts. Uh, should they have two guys? I can come up to one more floor uh, up to get one more. Uh, I want to ask you guys, um, anyone can share with me the two or three values of answers. You want to try? Yeah. It's about the consistent platform of yeah. management, yeah. Uh, public as well as on-prem environment. Yeah, and Consistency. Consistency yeah. of operations and uh, pretty much uh, it's a software stack, right? You can run on anything on-prem. Yeah, software stack. It don't need to refresh your hardware. Yeah, certified with vSphere, so most of the customers have vSphere environments. Yeah. 6.5 current and more coming up in your roadmap. Perfect, thank you. It's a good summarize for my session as well. So it's uh, open source. It consists of user experiences, whether it's on-prem or cloud. And it's 100% software stack. You don't need to refresh your hardware. And the beauty for me, to me, is the beauty is open source technology. You know, you never worry about vendor lock in. Right? You can anytime you can move out. Should you didn't feel advantage or value from it. Uh, so with that, thank you very much. I enjoyed the session. Uh, I will reach out to you guys for the shirt. Thank you.